Hey everybody and welcome back to our Complete Dentures 2 instructional video course set for New York City College Technology. Uh, this video is on cold cure maxillary reline with the use of a reline jig. The demonstration is done by my friend and colleague Professor Sander Polanco and the audio by me, Professor Oscar Galvis. So let's begin. First, let's talk about the proper personal protective equipment that you will be using, as well as the material and equipment we need for the project itself. Personal protective equipment, PPE, since you're working with acrylic, should be the standard gloves, goggles, and mask. We see here that the materials are, that are necessary in order to perform the reline jig are beading and boxing wax, a Murphy knife, a mixing bowl and spatula, petroleum jelly, water, and the reline jig itself. The need for a complete denture reline exists due to loose fitting dentures. Over time, patients experience bone and tissue resorption. This results in a loose fitting denture that requires the intaglio surface to have new acrylic added to it. The first step in a denture reline is that the dentist takes the loose fitting denture and uses it as an impression tray to take a new impression. Once the denture and reline impression are received and disinfected, the first steps are to bead, box, and pour the impression. First, we must bead. Place wax along the facial and buccal surfaces of the borders. Use the freshly waxed areas to add the beading wax. Place the bead wax around the border and allow for about one to two millimeters of border to be exposed. Be sure to seal the bead wax around the borders. With the bead wax placed properly, it is now time to perform the boxing procedures. You want to place boxing wax around the beading wax. Be sure that it is adapted firmly. Remember that the purpose of beading, boxing, and pouring is for uniform thickness of model and proper thickness of land areas. Once the boxing wax is secured around the entire impression and attached to the beading wax, be sure to seal the entire seam from the bead wax to the boxing wax. There should be no fluids that can escape the seal. Once the beading and boxing procedures have been completed, we can then pour the reline impression with lab stone. Once the impression is poured, allow for the stone to set completely. Once the lab stone has completely set, retrieve the model from the boxing and beading. The model will most likely need to be trimmed on a model trimmer. 
shape the base and borders while trimming. When trimming the borders, take caution. Remember that this is a denture that will be reinserted into a patient's mouth. If the trimmer hits the denture, it could be damaged and require further repair. Once the model has been trimmed, it is now time to notch or score the model base, just as you would if you were going to articulate this model. Once the model has been notched or scored, you can place separating mediums such as petroleum jelly onto the acrylic surfaces, including the teeth. The reline jig is made up of two halves with assorted nuts and bolts, dependent on the manufacturer. The one here has three, others more commonly have two. Before beginning the procedure, it is best to get familiar with the equipment you'll be using, especially if it's your first time using the equipment. The first step in creating the jig assembly is to apply plaster to the first half of the jig. Ensure that plaster gets into the retention areas of the first half of the jig. On the first half of the jig, create a plaster platform. It should be as flat and even as possible. Place the denture with occlusal and incisal surfaces facing the platform. It is important to take note that the thickness of the plaster will aid you in seating this denture properly. Consistency of the plaster must be viscous enough to hold the denture in place and that it will not sink into the plaster completely. The goal of the denture placement is that only occlusal surfaces and incisal edges hold up onto the plaster platform. Once the bottom half has set, Place the top half on top of the placed denture to ensure that it has the proper clearance and that the lid does not interfere or hit the model. Once proper clearance has been confirmed, you can apply plaster to the base of the model, similar to how you would if you were articulating it. Once plaster has been applied to the top of the model, place the top half of the jig on the soft plaster. Ensure that the plaster enters the retention holes. Add plaster to the top to secure the plaster onto the jig. Secure the two halves of the jig in place using the nuts and bolts. As the plaster begins to set, you can remove the gross excess of the plaster with a Murphy knife. Once the desired amount of excess has been removed, allow the plaster to set fully. Once the plaster has set, you can open the jig. Carefully remove the denture from the cast and remove any residual wax. At this time, it is safe to remove the impression material from the intaglio surface of the denture. If adhesive was used, a handpiece with a carbide burr may be necessary to remove all impression material and adhesive. Remember that the purpose of a complete denture reline 
is to reline the entire intaglio surface with new acrylic. For maxillary cases, that means that a posterior palatal seal will be necessary again in order to ensure a proper fit with good retention. Once the posterior palatal seal is carved, apply tinfoil substitute to any gypsum surfaces that may be receiving the repair acrylic. Just as we discussed for tooth repair and fracture repair, you must grind any areas receiving new acrylic. So grind the intaglio and the borders creating a bevel in order to prepare for the cold cure repair resin that is going to be added to the intaglio surface. Once the denture surfaces have been prepared and tinfoil substitute has been applied to all the gypsum, we can begin to mix our monomer and polymer for our cold cure resin. Just as we did in our repair instructional videos, we will apply monomer to the areas that will be receiving the cold cure acrylic. Once the cold cure acrylic has reached the desired texture, usually doughy, it can be placed into the intaglio surface of the denture. It is also common to add the acrylic to any deep sulcus areas or by the posterior palatal seal area for maxillary dentures. Place the denture onto the model and then place the two halves of the jig together and secure them to one another using the nuts and bolts once again. The jig serves as a matrix, almost as if a flask that you are able to see through. This will hold the denture in place during the curing process. Sometimes this method results in a large amount of excess acrylic during the closing of the jig. You can remove this gross excess acrylic and contour the areas with monomer and a tool before placing it into the pressure pot. Before placing it into the pressure pot, check to make sure that the jig is fully secured. The pressure pot should be holding water at 110 degrees Fahrenheit at 15 pounds per square inch of air pressure for 10 minutes. Once the proper time frame has elapsed and the cold cure acrylic has fully polymerized, you may open the jig and evaluate your results. A sign that something may have went wrong is if there is acrylic all over your occlusal or incisal edges of your denture. Those surfaces should have been flush with the plaster. If there is acrylic present, it may mean that the denture lifted while securing the jig. If everything seems to have went well, you can carefully remove the denture from the cast using a Murphy knife. When retrieving the denture from the cast, you may note that there may be excessive thickness on the palate and borders of the denture. A gross reduction can be performed with a stone on a lathe. Extra thickness in the palate or denture base is a common result if we are looking to increase vertical dimension on the denture due to bone and tissue resorption. 
Once denture base thickness has been achieved, you may then use carbide burrs or arbor bands to contour the borders. You may notice a line of demarcation between the repair acrylic and the base of the denture. Blend those areas in until you can no longer see the line of demarcation. Remember that the process of relining a denture is similar to packing a denture. Therefore, freedoms may need to be freed again. Any fine contouring or finishing can be done with carbides on a handpiece. Make sure to take time to make a proper evaluation before proceeding to pumice and polishing. All the borders should be contoured and blended. For step-by-step -step pumicing procedures, reference the pumicing and polishing video for a full demonstration. For step-by-step -step procedures in high shine polishing, once again you can reference the pumicing and polishing video for the full demonstration. Once completed, a maxillary reline should show as a fully polished denture with blended borders, no porosity, detailed intaglio surface with a posterior palatal seal. 